Hi, I'm Rich Fink with the Western Loudoun Art and Studio Tour, and it is my pleasure to be interviewing Alice Power, watercolor artist. Alice, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Rich. Yeah. Well, that's that's great. I am too. And uh, why don't we get started with you? Tell me a little bit about your artistic journey. Well, it's it's a long one. I um, I I started painting when I was 11 years old, and um, that was just because my mother had a friend who was a watercolor artist. But before that. I, um, I was thinking about it last night that I really grew up in a very artistic home without anybody really trying to do that. I was constantly listening to music. My sister was a child prodigy pianist. So mm -hmm. for four hours a day, I heard beautiful piano music. And I also was privy to her process of how she was going to learn this music and interpret it. And, and it was all kind of subliminal, but it was all part of my childhood. And, um, and then uh, I had, uh, my mother was very interested in art and she bought me beautiful books, uh, storybooks mostly. And this was in the forties when there were really wonderful artists illustrating these books. And so I didn't like to read them very much, but I really loved looking at the pictures. And, uh, and then the other thing that uh, was interesting about my early childhood was I got interested in opera and I'm not quite sure why, but I think it had to do with the stories um, because my mother bought me a series of stories that went along with operas. And, um, at that time, Milton Cross was a um, radio commentary, com, comment, a radio announcer, and he um, did a Saturday afternoon commentary on the opera that was going on in the Metropolitan Opera House. So I would listen to those all the time and look at my beautiful books with the stories of the operas. So that kind of was the way I, I grew up as a child. And I went to a lot of concerts with my sister and my mother. And uh, we didn't have an art gallery in my town. But um, there was, it just seemed like there was a lot of art in the schools, on the walls, and, uh, and just classic, classic uh, paintings. So um, then when I got to be 11, my mother's friend gave me and three of my girlfriends uh, watercolor lessons. And so that was really the first um, painting instruction I had. We did a little bit of drawing, uh, but ma mainly she wanted us to learn how to use watercolor. So uh, that was where it all started. And then um, when I was in high school and college, I sort of dropped my painting. Um, except that I, I was a music major, I was a singer. And I got very bored in, in my classes. And so when I was supposed to be taking notes, I was doodling and drawing. <laughs> so I think I was kind of a dual art major, music major without even thinking about it. Um, so then um, after college, I went to New York and was in the theater. I was um, in musical comedy. And um, of course, there were all of the wonderful museums. And occasionally, I would go to the Metropolitan or some, some of the galleries around. Uh, but I didn't, I wasn't painting then. But I was very much into the process of making art, making music, making theater, making any kind of art. And without realizing it, I, I think I got to know how to, um, how the process is of dance and art and, and music and theater um, without ever really thinking that much about it. But now that I'm looking back on my life, I realize that there are so many things that were so similar in uh, composing music or uh, directing a show or, or um, 
singing a song and interpreting it as to when you sit down with a piece of paper and a paintbrush and you want to make some art. So that's kind of um, where I started. And then throughout my life, when the children were small, et cetera, I was a Sunday painter when we went on vacation, et cetera. I just um, didn't do very much. But my, my ambition was, and, um, and it was a good one, when I retired, I would paint. And that's what I did. I retired in uh, 1999. And I started painting and I started by taking lessons with Catherine Hillis, who was then in Loudoun County. She was a very good instructor. And I went to uh, Spring Maid Beach, which is in um, Myrtle Beach. It's, it's no longer there, but it was an annual for a long, long time, an annual gathering of watercolor painters, painters about a hundred, I think. And, um, you could choose an instructor. And I, I always chose Linda Baker, who's a fine um, artist. So that was um, my instruction. And then I just started painting. So that's my journey. Okay, that's a, that's a very, very cool journey. If yeah, you know. right. Yeah, because it, it sounds like to me, like um, with regard to the multiple creative creative arts that you were talking about, that you absorbed uh, a lot of this by, uh, you know, by, by the input from, you know, the, the museums and everything else that, that you did. So you were, you were primed for that uh, retirement to get uh, smack dab into, uh, into painting again, right? That's right. That's right. And, uh, and when I did uh, retire. I spent some time <laughs> um, just painting for myself. And then uh, I guess it was about five years ago, I started going to Carver uh, Senior Center. Mm -hmm. And they asked me if I would fill in for a teacher who um, was going to be back in a couple of weeks. Well, she never came back. And <laughs> so I have been teaching there until the pandemic. I've been teaching, uh, which I love to do. I absolutely love to teach, so, and painting. Um, I, I have I have a question for you, and we will get maybe a little bit deeper into uh, the uh, teaching, teaching. But prior to that, I have a question for you. So essentially, starting at the beginning of uh, of this century, you started avidly uh, going into uh, painting, and my question is. So how has your technique changed over all that time? Wow. Well, I'm not sure before the year 2000, I had much of a technique <laughs> because I, I really needed some instruction. Um, right. But the things that I've learned um, are, are really basically having to do with color. I, um, I have learned to um, see color a, a lot better and I, I keep learning. And so by color, I mean, um, as I'm getting into a painting, and uh, I guess you know that most of my paintings are pretty realistic, um, but I, I just see a million shades of green if I'm looking at a green tree. And I didn't used to do, do that. I would just paint a tree green, et cetera. And that was, you know, but now I see all the variations. I see the lights and the darks, and, and I see the reflections on it um, of other things. I'm looking at a tree right now. I'm looking at a lot of yellow that's in the tree that is reflecting from another tree. And um, I'm seeing the, the inner part of the tree, the in, interior of the tree where it's very dark. So it's you know, dark blue. And so um, I, I, those are the things that I see. And uh, those are the things that I'm encouraging my students to see. It's really all about what you see before you ever pick up a paintbrush. And so you ask the question is how, how has my style changed? Is that what you asked? Um, well, I, I don't know. Um, I guess I've learned a lot about composition too. And um, I kind of think that less is more in terms of, uh, a big piece of paper, um, if, if you uh, 
don't necessarily uh, include the whole scene, but maybe concentrate on um, a portion of what you're seeing so that you um, you have an interesting composition um, with uh, a, a little bit of dynamics to it and a little bit of flow, um, something to bring the people into looking at your painting. So it's what I'm learning is, is what's changed my style, I, I guess. Yeah. And uh, it sounds like you really uh, love teaching. Uh, I do, I do. yeah. How, because, many, how, many, uh, how many students have you had over these uh, last five or six years? Oh, golly. Um, well, the classes are ongoing, so some people just keep taking the same class over and over again. Um, and that would be the sort of advanced class. And we, I had to cut it off at 14 um, because of the room and just because my ability to get around to them individually. Um, and then there's another class on uh, Fridays that is more of a beginner class. And I like to take fewer in that so that we can get a little more individual instruction. So how many people have I taught? Golly, I, I, I would say uh, probably 70, you know, all told, because they come and go, you know, maybe yeah. I don't, I never thought to count. <laughs> well, that's okay. And, you know, um, so for some of them that have, I assume, marched from uh, beginner and on to the more advanced classes that you've been a mentor, is that, you think that's a, Oh yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, and um, right. yeah, I would, and um, and a friend. You know, I've made so many friends. Now at the Carver Center, they're all senior citizens, so everybody's fifty-five and up. But I have taught at home um, children and and other younger adults, and that's a whole other ball game. And that's just wonderful to teach children. Oh, I love I love to teach children because they kind of teach themselves, you know, they're just so full of wonder. It's great. Yeah, that's terrific. All right, so right now I'd like to bring over the three images that I, uh, I picked out out of your, uh, your, your juried uh, artwork from the tour. And, uh, and then we can talk about each one of those a little bit. Does that sound good? That's okay. wonderful. Okay, here we are. So let's be uh, let's be a little bit uh, traditional here and start from the left and make our way to the uh, to the right. Okay. Um, so, uh, what inspired you, and where is this house? And um, just just bring it home for me. Tell me tell me okay. how you decided to do this uh, wonderful. Right. Uh, well, the, I call it the Blue House, although it really is the house by the Aldi Mill. And um, it's, it's very interesting. I went there with Sketch Club. And um, the house, I, I decided to make it thinner than it was. And um, I changed. It's not exactly it's that way, but it, it, um, it was such a beautiful sky. And um, the more I worked on this, the, the bolder I got with the clouds and the sky and the shadows. And I think that's what this painting is all about. It's um, it's sort of realistic, but, but then again, there are some other things to it, especially the shadows um, and, and the, um, the, the lines that come in on the sides of the uh, paintings where the chops of the trees are. That kind of draws you into that house. And, and the, the house only having one window is kind of, I mean, it really did only have one window, but it, it's kind of interesting that um, there isn't any way of looking out of the house if you're on that side, other than that one second story window. So it's, and, and it's kind of earthy in the way I painted it. It's not, um, um, uh, blended too too much. It's it's kind of, kind of uh, earthy is the only thing I can uh, way I can describe it. It's it's a rough brush stroke stroke kind of uh, deal. Okay. 
All right, so my question is, um, did you, and I know you made some you know, changes here, but did you um, take a photo of this and work on it at home or did you work from sketches or, or what? Um, I actually sat there and um, painted it um, because I was with the sketch club and um, go out on Tuesdays and um, paint various places. Uh, and this, incidentally, it was quite a while ago. I think it was probably, uh, I don't know, maybe eight years ago. Um, but then I did take a photo and um, just to, as a reference, but I had really um, drawn the whole thing in and, and plotted out where I was going to, my values and how I was going to do the sky. Well, it's it's beautiful, and if it's eight years ago, I bet those trees are a little taller now, right? <laughs> and the house is a little bit fatter. If you go and see it, you'll say, oh, hey, it wasn't no. such a skinny house. <laughs> I love the house and how it sits and everything, but the, the, the sky is really, really interesting as well. It's, it's ambiguous in the sense like, is something rolling in or rolling out? Is there... Is there going to be a little bit of rain or, you know, it's... Or are those marshmallows? <laughs> are they marshmallows? <laughs> well, now that we're talking about food, let's move over to the next piece, this luscious uh, dish of um, uh, vegetables. I called and, it uh, Midsummer Vegetables. Midsummer Vegetables. Is that the title they, of it? They are. You know, if, I think it was July. And I, um, I did a piece for, um, oh, now I can't remember the name of it. Um, it's a, in Ashburn. It was housing development. And they, they asked artists to um, do murals for their, um, their, they had like four different um, visit, not visitor centers, homeowner center. Um, so they had a, a huge fireplace and they wanted a picture of um, the farm that they created on this place and uh, a watercolor usually isn't done um, with in this this picture was five feet by four feet which was huge but it included all of the vegetable gardens and the animals and the tractors and everything so when I completed this um, uh, other than the check that they gave me, which was very nice, they gave me these vegetables. And uh, so I brought them home and they were so beautiful that I just had to paint them. So there they are. And they hang in my kitchen. It's, it's a fairly large painting. It's about um, two feet by um, 18, 18 inches. So it's, um, it's a good kitchen painting. It's, you have to have a big wall for it to hang on. Okay. Well, that's a great story behind it. Yeah. Uh, it really uh, is, you know, about, uh, about the uh, painting you were doing, and then you ended up with these uh, vegetables, and they ended right. up on your wall. That's, yeah. That's, yeah. yeah. It was fun. It was really fun. But, I, you know, doing a large painting in watercolor is, is really very difficult. I've done several now, and you, you just um, just how you you reach the whole end of the painting is very very difficult. Just how you set it up is is very difficult because water watercolor just drips, and um, you have to be careful. So it's hard. You have to work flat. And sometimes you have to sort of crawl around. But anyway, it, it worked. Well, it certainly did. All right, let's go to the to the final one on on the right side. And what can you tell me about this piece? Well, I'm I think probably you're familiar with the term masking fluid, and um, masking fluid um, you use to save the white of the paper. So you kind of draw with masking fluid before you ever start to to paint if you want to save certain things that um, you want to be white. And usually those are reflections. And um, I had a lot of reflections in the grasses. 
um, they, the grasses were, this is a good, um, they were interesting in that they were, they were green, uh, but they were also pink and brown and uh, there was some blue in them and then they were reflecting the white, the light. Uh, and they were growing along a, a little stream that is in Manteo, um, North Carolina. There's a museum there that has a, a path that you walk around and this stream mm -hmm. is there. So they're, I guess they're marsh, marsh type grasses. And because they're, they're thick, they have this underneath, um, they recede back to the, uh, and, and form shadows that are underneath the grasses. And as you can see on the edge, the upper edge there where it's very dark. So it, it was so interesting to have this under, under, um, underneath the grasses at the edge of, of the pond. And then the whole thing was reflected, of course, in the stream. It was really fun to paint and um, because it, it, it was a simple scene, but when I got into it and I did work from a photo um, after I sat there and sketched for a while, um, after I really got into it, I saw all these different colors and, and shadows and, um, you know, the dimensions and, uh, and the whole thing was reflected, which was, reflections are great fun. Yeah. So I'm glad you picked those three uh, paintings because they're all different techniques and all different uh, styles, really. Well, and they're all excellent. That's Thank the you. other thing that they, have, that they have in common. Okay, well, let's, uh, if you don't mind, I'd like to sweep away these three beautiful paintings and Thank go you. back to uh, just the two of us chatting. How's that sound? Yeah. Thank so you. here we are. We're back. Oh, great. Now, should I just hold it in front of my face like this? Yeah. yeah. That's oh. great. Right there. That's that's perfect. That's All right. That's Okay, well, this is a photo that my daughter took um, when we were in Paris. We were walking down the street, going back to our hotel, and we looked uh -huh. in a little cafe, and here is this dog just dying to get out on the street. <laughs> I guess he's a little um, French bulldog, I don't know, but he um, had well, reflected on him was a neon light which made him sort of a pinky purple color and I just have always wanted to paint him because of the expression on his face and um so i just finished this and it it was very challenging because of just trying to get the dynamic of it being the nightlife in paris but uh -huh. oh this dog and his 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 great emotion uh, trying to get out. And, uh, you know, um, my daughter was looking at it the other day and she said, well, it's really appropriate for all of us now who are dying to get out. <laughs> get out, absolutely, absolutely. So, yeah, so there he is. And I, I, I haven't really done a lot of animals, but I had to do this. I had to paint this one. Right, yeah. because, you know, I, absolutely sure that lots of uh, art lovers would like to see more of your work. Do, do you post any of your work on a Facebook page? Yes, yeah. Okay. And um, it's Alice Power Artist. All right, well, Alice, it has been absolutely great chatting with you today, as I, as I knew it would be, as I thank knew you. it would be. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. This was really yeah, we should do it more often. <laughs> You're absolutely right. I want you to do three things for me, though. I, I want you to stay safe. I want you to stay healthy. And I want you to have a great day today. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, can I wish the same for you? Yeah, yeah sure. That's great. You know, those are very good things. Yeah. All right. Well, you oh. take care. Well, you take care of yourself. Thank you and have fun.